Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be continuing on with our RPG game tutorial series, and uh, we're going to, you know, do some more stuff with our um, inventory. So uh, let's start where we uh, finished last time. So we'll go to our character, okay, and um, we're going to actually set up the um, kind of event or functionality for creating our uh, inventory, okay. So not actually designing the inventory yet, but just scripting it. Uh, so to do this, let's go ahead and go to our project settings, and we're going to add a new action mapping for it. Um, so we'll add a new one, and I'm going to call this uh, inventory. And for the key, I'm going to use the I key. I for inventory, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, so with that set up, we can go back to our character. Um, and let's right-click in some open space. And I'm going to say uh, inventory. So add the action event. Right, now whenever we press this... Um, we're going to want to do a check, okay? Uh, so we'll say branch, and what we're going to check is um, if some or if our inventory is already open, uh, because if it is, then we want to close it, and if it isn't, then uh, then we're going to want to open it. And the reason that we're going to do this branching check uh, is because we're going to allow our player to still kind of run around and do stuff um, while the inventory is open. So um, so it'll just be easier to close it this like by doing this kind of flip flop um, rather than kind of the the way we did the skill tree. So, uh, anyways, enough talk. Let's uh, keep doing. Let's keep going. So uh, we're gonna add a variable here that I'm gonna call is inventory open. All right, and we'll change this to a boolean. Okay, and by default we want it to be false. Okay, because you know it's not gonna be open. Right, so now off of um, off of false, right? So if it's o if it's not open, then we're going to want to open it. So we're going to say create widget. We're going to create our UI um, underscore inventory. All right, and then we're going to promote this to a variable so that we can uh, you know do some stuff with it. Uh, so I'll call this inventory uh, reference, I guess. Yep, there we go. And then we will add it to the viewport. Okay, now we're going to set its Z order to 1, just so it takes priority over our game HUD. Okay. And then from there, um, we're going to want to now uh, get our player, oops, get our player controller. Alright, because we're going to want to um, change kind of the the input mode so that they can still run around but then they can use the inventory as well. So we'll drag off and we'll say um, set input mode to game and UI. Okay. So there we go. Now um, uh, for the in widget in focus we will hook up this inven <laughs> inventory reference. Um, let me change that really quick. Didn't catch that. There we go. Inventory reference. Um, now after we set the input mode, we are also going to want to make sure we can see our mouse. So we'll say set uh, sh set show mouse cursor. Okay, and we'll set it to true. All right. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set is inventory open. So we'll say set and we'll set it to true. All right. So there we go. So that's that's for creating the widget. Um, now now that it's true, right, and we press it again, it'll read, you know, this is true, so we know now that we want to close it. Okay, so um, so off of true, we are going to get our inventory reference, which has been created here, and we're going to say, you know, remove from parent. Okay, so off of true, hook that up, and we'll remove it from parent. Now after we've done that, we're going to want to kind of do this whole chunk again, um, except a little differently. So we can take our get player controller, control C, control V to paste, and we'll say set input uh, mode to UI, or not UI only, but game only. Um, and again, you know, if your game calls for something else, like, you know, you can change up how you do these input modes, uh, but this is just how I'm doing it. Um, then next we're going to want to set uh, show mouse cursor to false. All right. And then we'll want to set is inventory open uh, to false as well. Okay. So 
So there we go, we've got that done. Um, next what we can do is, uh, or next what we should do is we want to, oh, sorry. So next what we'll do is we'll go and um, actually start creating our inventory. So uh, let's go back out here to the content browser. Um, we can close some of this stuff for now. We'll come back to it. Um, and we'll go to your, our UI folder and we'll open up our UI inventory. Okay. So here it is. Right now it's just a canvas panel. So what we're going to add here is um, we're going to go ahead and search for a vertical box. All right, and we'll drag that and drop it onto the canvas panel. And now we'll change the anchor. Um, we'll position our inventory kind of over here. Um, so put it at kind of this middle middle right position. Um, say zero zero for now. Um, now for the X, let's go ahead and set it to one, just so it pushes it all the way over. And then Y, maybe 0.5, just to center it a little bit. Okay, and then for size X and size Y, I think. Um, Maybe we could go for about 600 by 600. That might work out all right. It might be a bit big, um, but you know we'll just we'll go with it. Um, and then let's make it come off of the side a little bit. So maybe position X can be negative 10. That'll just push it off the side a little bit. Okay. So the next thing we're going to add is a canvas panel. Okay. So we'll add a canvas panel to the vertical box, uh, just so that we can anchor things within this box now. So we'll set it to fill, so it fills the whole thing. Uh, now we're going to add an image. So we'll drag that and drop it onto the canvas panel. And we're going to set its anchor to the whole canvas. Okay, And then we'll set all these offsets to zero. So it fills the whole thing. All right, and now for tint, let's go ahead and change this to kind of a black value and maybe a little translucent. So 0.85 for alpha might be all right okay there's that and then next we're going to add a scroll box okay we'll add this to the canvas panel um, and basically this scroll box will allow us to you know scroll through the inventory items that we have um, so we'll anchor this to the center and we'll align it to the center by saying 0.5 and 0.5 um, let's set the position back to zero and then we'll change the size to um, about, oops, to about 500 by 500. All right, so there's our scroll box now. Now inside the scroll box, we're going to add a uniform grid panel, uh, and this will this will help us lay out our inventory items, you know, in a uniform matter or way, I guess. Um, okay, so we've added that. Let's go ahead and set the horizontal alignment to left. Um, we'll set the slot padding to 4, and then we'll set the minimum and uh, desired uh, width and height here to 100 and 100. And uh, by doing this, it will basically add, you know, five boxes here, um, or like five, five inventory slots will be able to fit in a row uh, nicely. Um, but, you know, of course, you can always change up these values to fit your own needs. Okay. Uh, so the final thing that we'll add, I guess, is um, let's just add something that kind of says, you know, inventory. Uh, so we'll add some text to the canvas panel. And we will anchor this to the top center. Position it at zero. Um, set its X to 0.5 alignment, you know, to center it. Um, I'm going to say size to content. And, uh, you know, for position Y, we could say maybe 10. No, that's too much. 5 just to get it off the top there a little bit. And we'll call this um, inventory. All right, so there we go. Uh, that's That'll be everything so far for our inventory. Um, the last thing, let's just make sure our uniform grid panel here is a variable. And then we'll change its name to uh, inventory panel. So now let's just compile and save, and that should be good. So um, I guess we can test this out really quick if I hit play. Um, here we go. We've got, you know, our screen shows up, whatever. Uh, and if we click that I key now for inventory, it should open. Um, so here it is. Here's our inventory. If we click it again, it goes away. All right. So now, you know, I can still move around and I can click in the screen to move, you know, move around. But now I'll be able to click on stuff in the inventory. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and now in our UI folder, let's open up the inventory item. UI. 
All right, so we're actually going to get rid of the canvas panel in this one uh, because we are going to use this widget inside of our inventory. Okay, so it doesn't need really a canvas panel. Um, so uh, all we're going to add for this is a button. Okay, and we'll call this just item button and make sure it's a variable. All right, and then we'll add some text. Okay, now the text is optional. Right, you don't have to have text if you don't want to. Um, but with the text, I'm going to set it to auto wrap, set it to horizontal alignment, and I'm going to make it size really small, like 12. Um, that might actually be too small, but um, yeah, that'll be fine for now. Uh, anyways, um, we also want to make sure that this text is variable because we'll be setting it, um, setting it ourselves. So we'll say item text, I guess. Uh, next, let's go back to our item button, and we're going to change up some of the style here. Um, for the normal padding, let's say zero, and for the press padding, we'll also say zero. And this is simply because our uh, our UI inventory here is already kind of setting the padding um, that we'll have right there, slot padding. Okay, so we can compile that and save it. Um, last thing we'll do is we'll go to the graph. And we are going to add uh, a variable here called f, or not f, but just item info. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make that um, an f item info, and uh, make that public for now. So the last thing that we'll do now for this video is we'll go back to our UI inventory, okay, and we'll go to the graph, and um, we're just going to add a couple variables here uh, that will. Um, help us in the next video. So uh, let's create a new variable that we will call um, column position. Okay, and we'll change this to an integer. Uh, we'll add another one called row position, and we'll add one more called row length. Uh, now, basically, what each of these are going to be is uh, the column and row position are going to represent where um, in kind of the the grid, um, or you know, where inside this grid. Uh, the item will be positioned, all right? So like right here would be row one, column one, or row zero, column zero, because it's zero based. Uh, then there would be, uh, you know, row row zero, column one, you know, row zero, column two, etc. So um, that's what that'll be. And then row length is going to basically just uh, determine how long our, you know, how many, how long our rows are basically. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.